Welcome everybody. In this episode, we are starting something completely new because what we were working on before, honestly, was just really boring and I was just absolutely tired of working on it. My soul was dying a little bit inside and I was withering away rather quickly. So this episode, we're going to start with a completely new app. And this time we're going to be adding two interesting things, which is TypeScript and Axios for our requests. So we're basically restarting. So some of this may be some review, getting things up and going, but if you want some more practice, this is a great place to start. So this episode, we're gonna talk about how to start a TypeScript React project. And you might be wondering, what is TypeScript? Is this like a new language? Is this an alternative to JavaScript? Well, it's very similar to JavaScript, but it adds static typing. So our variables are going to have types. This will help prevent runtime errors during the execution of the software by moving those errors to compile time errors. Definitely pros and cons to this. It's going to take a little bit extra learning and a little bit extra work up front, but ideally the execution of your code goes a lot better because you don't have to worry about as many runtime issues. All right, so we're going to talk about how to create a React application starting with TypeScript. If you already have a React application, it is possible to add TypeScript in after it's already been created. However, it's easiest just to start with TypeScript. So here's documentation from createreactapp.dev. Here's how you can start an application with TypeScript or instructions to add TypeScript to an existing Create React App project. So we're going to go with the first one here. You can copy if you have this page open or you can just type it out. And what we'll do is go to a terminal and you will want to change directory to wherever you want to create a project. So I'm just gonna go into my CS folder, which is where I put all my code. And then I'll say NPX create react app, and then go ahead and give this some sweet name. So we're going to build a little application to check crypto prices. So I'm just gonna call this crypto. All right, so I guess you can't name it whatever you want. So let's go ahead and change this to something like crypto currencies. Let us go through the process of creating the app, and I think you'll find that it's pretty similar to create React app if you've used it without TypeScript. There's just going to be a few things different. So let's go ahead and say code cryptocurrencies, and that'll open that project in Visual Studio Code, or just open VS Code and open a folder finding this one. So pretty similar structure. You'll notice a couple of differences, such as this React app environment D, which brings some React script stuff in. I don't even know what this file is for, to be honest, but it doesn't matter. We're going to go ahead and delete some of these other things we don't need. So we're not going to do any testing, so we'll remove those. We'll remove app.test. We will remove the logo. You'll likely notice they have this tsconfig.json file, which is where you can configure your TypeScript rules. We're going to keep that. And you'll notice that the JavaScript files now end in TSX. So let's go ahead and go into the CSS files and clear those out. And now let's start an app.tsx. We will remove the logo. And inside of index.tsx, we will remove the report web vitals and remove this section down here. I think that's all that we need to remove from index.tsx. Now we can just go into app.tsx and remove everything inside of this div. So we will just say hello, and let's run this application, make sure everything is saved, and we'll open a new terminal. And inside here, we'll just say npm start. Now you may have your other application running still, so you can see it asks if you wanna run on another port instead. That's up to you, so if you don't, then you can go close out of your other server. I'll close out of that, and now we can restart. When the page loads, it'll look something like this. So now you have a TypeScript application going. Now the other thing we're going to be using is Axios, which is another way to make requests. So pretty similar to Fetch, but slightly different and a little bit cleaner in my opinion. Just wanna get experience with another option. If you're already familiar with Fetch, switching over to Axios is going to be really easy. Actually, probably easier than Fetch. So for this, we will want to install Axios, so it's not included by default. So let's go ahead and say npm install Axios. Once this is done, you will import it. You'll say import Axios, and this is the default export, so you're not going to have it inside of curly braces. You'll say import Axios from, and then inside of quotes, you'll say Axios. Let's jump into using Axios by making a request to an API. 
We want to use an API that doesn't require any kind of key just to keep things really simple. I was looking around for a good cryptocurrency API. There are a lot out there. The one I think is going to work best for this series is CoinGecko. So CoinGecko is a really popular website to look at coin prices over time, very similar to CoinMarketCap. So we can get a lot of this information displayed on their page inside of our application by using their API. And they have a free one that at the time of this video does not require an API key. And if they change that, well, I'm gonna throw hands. So don't ruin my series, CoinGecko. In fact, you should sponsor me. Everybody needs to know about CoinGecko. Anyways, you can get documentation on their API at coingecko.com, English API documentation. And they have some examples down here so let's go with this here. You can try it out and you'll just throw in an ID. The IDs come from coins list, but for example, I know Bitcoin should work. And then you compare that to some other currency such as USD. The other stuff is optional, so we'll execute. And you can see Bitcoin is priced at 20,167. So overall, using this API is easy. And then you're given this URL that you can just copy and paste in a new tab and you'll get that data. So this is exactly how you're going to consume this API, no keys required. Although I wanna do more than just get the price of Bitcoin. So let's see what other options are available to us. Scrolling through, we could get a list of coins. Let's try this out. Get and we will throw in, actually, you don't even have to pass anything in here. Really easy. I'm going to die of old age waiting for it to load, though. All right, this one's just broken. I don't know. Let's try the next one. So get, oh, oh my gosh. Let's try this again. You know, maybe I don't want them to sponsor me. Let's try this one. All right, we'll go in here and we will try it out. The verse currency, we will put USD and that's the only thing required so hit execute now do note this may require paging if you want to get all of the data right now we're just getting 100 of them but this is the url we can use to get all the data we need so let's take a look at what it might look like you can scroll through here lots of stuff so each thing will have an id a symbol and then a bunch of information about it and basically we could load this into a drop down allowing the user to select a specific cryptocurrency and then we can load some data about it. So let's talk about how we can do this inside of our code. So make sure you grab the URL, which I just realized you could just take this one here instead of selecting it inside of the curl. But yeah, grab this request URL. They should add a copy button. Anywho, we're gonna take this and we're going to say const URL and assign this that value. Now, this is a string. Normally, we wouldn't have to worry about the types too much, but we need to pay a little extra attention when we're using TypeScript. However, we're not getting any problems with this either, and that's because the type is inferred from the value we're assigning to the variable. If you come from other programming languages, you might be familiar with something like var URL without giving it a type, and then you put some value here as opposed to doing something like string URL. It's a similar concept here where the type is automatically decided for URL because of what we assigned to it. And that's all done at compile time because TypeScript is compiled down to regular JavaScript. We can see this easily by changing this to something else, say let, and then saying, let me clean this up, URL is five. This is our first TypeScript error, and you're going to see it show up in the problems tab down here. So type number is not assignable to type string, and this is a TypeScript error. If we weren't using TypeScript, this wouldn't be a problem. You might be curious why this is a benefit. Well, if we design our functions and our code to accept certain types, we have more predictable behavior. So if, for example, we want to add some data together, well, we would want that to be a number and not a string. And if we tried to use a string, we could have a compile time error. So let's go ahead and change this back to what we had. We will set this to const. Now I've just been kind of showing some of the TypeScript basics here, but let's actually try to make this a working page. So we'll go ahead and switch these around so that the return is at the bottom and our web request is going to be made inside of a use effect. So we'll say use effect and this will take a function which is where we're going to define this URL. So I'll take that from there 
paste it in the use effect, and then we will import use effect. So import use effect from React. And I'm going to remove this other import that we're not using right now. And we'll keep Axios there because we're about to use it. So I'll bring this down to the next line and we are going to say axios.get, pass in the URL. Pretty similar to fetch, we are going to have a then which is going to have the response here. The primary difference is that we do not need to say return response.json and then have another then like we would with the fetch. Instead, we can just have response.data. So response.data is going to have the actual data from the request. So to see this, we can say console log response.data and to get this to only execute once on initial page load, we will put an empty dependency array. So this is what our Axios request is going to look like. So let's try it out. We'll visit the page, head over to our app and open the terminal. We should, in theory, see an array of 100 elements. So we're able to get that page. And this is a bit simpler than a typical fetch that we would have done in earlier on in the series. So I like the way this is going, looking pretty clean. So now what I want to do, instead of console logging response.data, I want to assign this to some state. So let's create some state up here. We will import use state. And inside of app, we will say const cryptos set cryptos. And this is going to be assigned use state. And then let's set cryptos down here. So instead of console log, we will invoke set cryptos. Now down here in our return, we can print that information on the page for now. So to do this, what we will do is first create a ternary. So if cryptos has a value, what we're going to do is do cryptos.map to loop through the data. If there is no data, then we will just return null. Now we're getting our error down here. Property map does not exist on type never. So to fix this, we can say that the data being returned from this API, which looks like this, should match some structure we define in our code. What this will look like is defining a type up here. So we can say export type, and we will just call it crypto here with a capital C and we will define what the properties expected on this type are. So we can look through this list and just grab a few things we're interested in. Let's grab the ID, the symbol, the name, not too interested in the image, maybe just like the all time high and the all time low and the price, probably the name too to be displayed. So what you can do is you can copy these from the response or you can type them out if you want. This is just a, a way to make sure we get the exact property names and we'll save it will kind of format that a bit. But instead of having actual values, we're going to replace these values with what type they are. So this is a number. And for simplicity's sake, I'm really not interested in a lot of these things. So I'm going to get rid of these. If you're following along, you could definitely keep these, but I don't plan on using them. So I'm just not going to have them on here. And that'll just keep our code a little simpler. So this is a number. The current price is also a number. The ID, however, is not a number. Instead, it is a string. So we'll say string. Yeah, and you can just keep whatever excites you out of this list. Again, the name is a string here. The symbol is a string. And that looks good to me. I think actually I'm going to add two back in that I decided I wanted, which was high 24 hour, which was a number and low 24 hour, which was a number. So now that we have this type, we can say that the state should be of this type, but not just a single crypto. It's actually an array. So to do this, what we're going to do is after the use state before the parentheses, you're going to use less than and greater than angle brackets here. And you're going to say crypto is the type and then use square brackets to say that it's an array. And then you can use the pipe or the or symbol or the union symbol and say null. So this can either be null if we don't have any returned or it's going to be an array of crypto. And now that we told it what type to expect, we no longer get that same error, but we're getting a new error here. So you can see TypeScript is really guiding us on what to do next. 
this is expecting one to two arguments, but got zero. So the argument it is expecting is a function. And inside of here, we will need to do something to show up on the page because we are assigning to type react node. So for now, we can just return a paragraph. And using curly braces, we can grab a single crypto object. We'll just use the lowercase c here, crypto. And we can type out crypto dot. And you can see all these properties that we've typed out up here are showing up in the IntelliSense. So we can be sure that we don't mistype something. So let's just go with the name. And if you mistyped it, say you put name with two E's, you're going to get a TypeScript error. So you never have to worry about using a property that doesn't exist on that type. So let's switch that back to name. And let's also add in the price here. So we will add in a space and then a dollar sign plus crypto dot current price. So saving that, we'll do a quick reformat. This is what your code should look like. We don't have any TypeScript problems. And checking out the page, we see all of the cryptocurrencies and their price. Another really valuable thing provided by TypeScript is it will prevent you from using some data that might not have a value. I was already ready for this using this ternary, but let's say we got rid of this ternary and we just put these curly braces down here, getting rid of that as well. Well, this is going to give a problem saying object is possibly null or undefined. So we actually won't even be able to use this code. We're going to get an error in the browser. You may also notice TypeScript is pretty clear about the difference between null and undefined. Those are not the same thing in JavaScript, just so you are aware. Undefined is when a variable has no value where null is a value, that value is just nothing. So you can see that specifically here where we say this could be an array of crypto or null but the default here is actually no value at all, which is undefined. So if we defaulted this to null, now it only says object is possibly null. It still doesn't fix this problem down here, so we will go ahead and add that ternary back in, cryptos. And null. All right, so far so good. What we're going to do is we are going to add all this to a new commit. And I'm just going to call this commit initial API request with Axios and TypeScript. And up in GitHub, I'm going to call this repo TX Axios, and I will make this public so you can reference this code. So we'll create this repo, and then I will push my repo up to this location. And now you should be able to get this code here and you can go to the commit history to find any of the commits viewing the code at that time if you need to reference anything. Thank you for watching my intro to TypeScript and Axios. Hopefully this was helpful. And in the next video, I'm hoping to build upon this. Up next, I want to create a component inside of TypeScript, so we have to worry a bit about types, and it'll be pretty fun, so check it out. I'll see you in the next episode. Be sure to subscribe.